Hi everyone, what's up? In this video, I'm going to discuss how you can improve your overall skill set when it comes to programming and how you can excel at any DSA interview. I have not focused on any single language here, but what I've discussed is a guide on how to be prepared for programming questions asked in data engineer interviews. I've divided this guide into multiple parts in which I will explain how you can go from zero to expert level. I personally follow this guide and I've seen improvement in my own problem solving skills. So I've decided to share the same with you all. The topics I will cover today are start as if you know nothing, DSA topics most important for DE, study all the important patterns, increase difficulty, do I need to solve hard problems. If you're new to the channel, then please push the subscribe button as it will help my channel grow. I post videos every week to help you clear your next interview. Also, if you found this video useful, then please click the like button and share it with your friends. Now let's get started with the video. So the first part is divided into multiple sections. First section is start with basic programming lessons. If you are a beginner, then I'll recommend watching any short Python programming tutorial or any programming tutorial. Take around a week to grasp the concept and then jump into solving questions. Then use Tuff for practicing. I've put the link to the website in the description. Tuff has a curated list of questions divided into different data structures. You can follow the topics one by one and solve only the easy questions first. If the question is too hard, even the easy one, or if it's too overwhelming, then simply see the solution and make sure you note the question and its solution in a notepad for revision purpose. Next section is set a time and follow that with discipline. Practice makes a man perfect is a quote you have to strictly follow. Set a time in your daily routine in which you will practice as many questions as you can. At first, even one question will take time to solve. But if you are consistent, then slowly you will be able to solve more questions in the same time. The next section is solve consistently. Consistency is the key here. I usually start my work day with solving some lead code question every day at 7 am. This is the time I am most efficient. So you need to identify with which time of the day you are most comfortable with. Then next part is don't force yourself to solve. Coming back to this point, it is very important that you don't spend too much time on a single question. I spend maximum 15 minutes to a single question and if I'm not able to solve it in that given time, then I see the least complex solution and make a note of it. So I have maintained a workspace in VS Code where I save all the questions and its solution. I try to save the solution with ON time complexity. Next section is try to understand more than memorizing. When it comes to revising, make sure you're not memorizing the solution. So what I do is I would jump back on a question which I have noted down in my notebook after three or four days and again attempt it with a fresh mind. So this is one of the question which I was not able to solve at the first try and I had studied and noted its solution. This way, I make sure that I'm not memorizing the answer, but improving my own logic building skill. Then the final section is revise every end of the week, end of the month. Whatever I have solved, I have saved it in VS Code and I make sure to revise it every weekend and every month end. I would pick a couple of already solved random question and try to solve it again. On doing this with consistency, I have noticed my skills have improved much more than before. Now that you know that you have to practice programming and how you should practice programming, let's see which DSA topics to start with. Now there are multiple DSA topics and it is very difficult to grasp all of them as we also have daily jobs or maybe you have college assignments. So if you are aspiring to become a data engineer, then focus mostly on list and string questions for the first. And I'm not saying that you can ignore the rest of the data structures, but first become an expert in list and string. So in order to get the topic wise questions, just go to lead code, then select array, then filter the list of questions by easy. Same way you will find a list of questions for string, solve at least 50 questions in both. Once you have covered list and string, then move to hash map or dictionary, then link list and after that trees. And if you still have some time or energy left, then attempt graphs. In my experience, graphs is one of the least asked in data engineer interviews. So attempt it at the very end. 
For rest, you can follow the map as shown on the screen. Now that we have covered the topics and in which order we have to study them, let's discuss some key techniques or patterns used in programming. Programming patterns is the most important weapon in your arsenal. Using these patterns, you can solve programs more efficiently. Moreover, these patterns help you achieve O N time complexity. In interview, you are expected to give at least a least time complex solution. I have displayed the important programming patterns here, so you can search them on YouTube to understand what they are and where to use them. Make sure you note down these in a notepad and no need to put all your time in studying all these patterns. Example, you can start with two pointers or prefix some concept and solve three or four question first to get a grasp of it. Just remember you have to study the patterns and solve programming questions in parallel. Finally, try to solve at least 50 questions keeping these patterns in mind. The whole idea behind learning these patterns is that when I get a question, can I solve it using any one of these patterns or not? So you should increase the difficulty only after you have done these three things. Out of all the DSA topics, study at least four: list, string, linked list, and hash map. Learned couple of programming patterns. Finally, solved 50 to 70 questions in easy. If you have confidence, then while doing the above steps, you can try solving some medium level questions. But if it feels too overwhelming, then don't spend too much time in grinding your head and just solve the easy questions. By the end of doing these steps, you can jump on to medium questions. Let's say it seems hard for you, but even then you have to follow the same steps. I have summarized the steps here. Start with list or string type medium question and then move on to other DSA topics. If question is too hard, then see the solution and note down the question. Keep revising the previously solved questions every weekend and month end. Pick a question you have already solved a week back and attempt it again without looking at the solution. Try to apply the programming patterns while solving. Finally, solve at least 50 questions in medium as well. Coming to the last part of this video, do I need to solve hard questions or not? The short answer is no, you don't need to solve hard questions. In most data engineer interviews, the service based or the consultant companies usually ask easy level questions and the product based companies may ask you both easy and medium level questions. Only a few co companies may ask you hard level questions. So if you have time, then you can increase the difficulty level of your question and practice the hard level as well. But my suggestion is, instead of grinding your head with hard questions, just try to solve 100 questions of both easy and medium that might be more effective in your preparation. If you are consistent for a duration of let's say 3 to 6 months and keep following the steps that I have shown you in this video, then you will definitely see a big improvement in your overall coding skill set. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, then please share it with your friends and like the video. In the coming few weeks, I, will, I have planned many such videos on PySpark and SQL interview questions. So stay tuned for them and if you have not subscribed, then please press the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.